Hey everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. Today is another LEGO Top 10 Mocks of the Week episode where I show you the coolest custom creations I happen to see people building in LEGO bricks throughout this last week. Links to everybody I'm showing you and a whole lot more are in the description below, so if you have any extra time, I highly recommend you check out the original designers. Let me know which custom creations were your favorite. And before we jump in, first I'd like to say that the custom building instructions that have gone up in the web store this week come from the designer Kevin J. Walter. This is the Goa old Hatak, and it's easily one of the more unique starships out there. It's symmetrical to three angles, has a tetrahedron pyramid in the center, and an extremely interesting construction style in order to actually get everything to balance correctly. It's a great looking model. If you wanted to build this, you can check us out at www.brickvault.toys. Everything's linked in the description below. Let's check out some honorable mentions first from Andrew Tate. This is simply titled Bank. It looks to be built on the modular creator scale. It looks sort of simple from afar, but I definitely like uh, the nice angles that he managed to capture with the tower in the center. This is the Adventure at Amazon Crossing from Jan Wozniak. A detailed little build here from Hubba Blueba. Uh, the title is Spring Reunion. Jayfa's Crimson Mountain Drake has some excellent details. Here's a great collection photo from Remco Rohan, his Lego Star Wars Imperial Fleet. Andreas Lenander has a very interesting color highlight for that tower in the back. The title is Burj Flaath, and it's certainly one of the more interesting color combinations for a larger diorama. This is actually kind of a similar vein from Extrius. The title is Sildrith's Retreat, and it follows the tan beige brown color combo with just a few uh, more vibrant highlights thrown in and around the tower. And lastly, here is Blake Foster's Procyon Planetary Research Hovercraft, also symmetrical to three sides. It's a great looking build with a very nice blue strip color inlay brick built into the entire model. And now let's jump into the top 10 creations. Montgomery Burns has a great track record for some organic detailing and his coral reef is absolutely awesome. The closer and closer you look, the more interesting pieces you'll find for strange coral reef shapes. There's feather caps, carrots, those eye prints from the hidden side sets. The demigorgon head is in there. Different color clown hair. And I mean, that's just a tiny, tiny little chunk of what is a much larger piece of the coral reef diorama. So many nice colors and shapes. And then number nine is from Ari Lego. This is the Crimson Mill, the west face of it. This quite tall building has some great levels and details kind of thrown all around it. There are three different balconies and a four one which is sort of like a walkway that could connect to another structure great archway detailing nice build for a roof and the dark red blends quite well with the reddish brown wood detailing that's inlaid between the stone revenue titled this one prairie king easily my favorite bit of detailing for this character is the uh, build choices for the skull those tooth pieces that are clipped in have a great way of kind of outlining smaller teeth detailing at the bottom and then lining up at the top of the teeth to show that cavity for a missing nose. There's minifigure arms as well as other horn detailing. It's just a really excellent combination of pieces that make up a skull. Plus you've got arrows in the body. He's holding a pistol. He's got a great missing arm and an awesome stance. So many clever connections. It really makes a very well thought out character. And I just can't help myself, but Mitsuru Nikaido has another mecha creature this is a mecha beetle and the detailing is just so excellent and clean along the top and even when you open up the beetle there is a huge amount of detail for the insides as well. He's got an excellent way of using mechanical details to outline specific organic accuracies with his mechanized creatures. Now, number six is from Brandon Griffith. This is Grand Moff Tarkin. These plate built figures are really fun because they can create some extremely accurate and subtle details that otherwise maybe aren't as easy to capture with different brick building approaches. I appreciate that his shiny boots are tiled off. That's a fun effect. The outline for the head is awesome. I mean, he's just managed to outline the actual shape and stance of this character to a scarily good level of detail. Number five, we have a build from Ralph Langer. The title is Land Ahoy. This is currently up on Ideas, so it's like a table topper, a nice bit of display work, and it's a fun model with tons of great little micro details to appreciate. I love the build for the ship 
ship at the bottom. There's some subtle color variations for the land on the island, which is a nice little bit of detail. And I particularly like just all the different colors that are inlaid underneath the water detailing. And it both gives you a great sense of scale, and it also makes this area just feel a little bit more real and alive. The curving structure is an excellent way to help just draw the eye and make this piece feel very unique. And I'd be curious to see if this one actually makes it through to the uh, 10,000 voting stage. Anyways, let's move on to number four. Here is a build called Elf on the Hunt. It's a small diorama. And Dwayne Dane 98 is the builder here. Uniquely, he's made the water detailing just with trans clear, no blue, which is kind of a fun touch. And you can see the elf has spotted a large buck or maybe an elk that's on the higher cliff. The nature details are extremely thorough. We've got a few different build styles for different size trees and different types of trees. Now we're in the final three. This is TCOA full low. It's a large vignette that was built to be displayed in a Lego store. I don't know what that acronym stands for. And the builder here is Jamie Wheeler. The color gradation between the trees is by far the main thing that grabbed my eye from uh, a distance. I think that's an excellent way to draw somebody's attention in for a large piece like this. But then when you start looking close, there are details everywhere. I love the color gradation for the water. So many interesting characters appreciating nature in different ways. And there's just something about the build style here that makes me think that the person putting this together really, really had a good time doing it. Number two is from Jonas Wide, AKA Gideon. This is Khalif Flynn Way Station. And there's just something so satisfying about this tower creation. It looks like a simple rectangle, but there's a bit more complex stuff happening here than uh, what maybe initially meets the eye. The brick arch detailing that go above the door as well as the windows at the top has such a subtle and interesting way of spacing those tiles out. The pyramid-like shape for the top roof is done so cleverly with those cheese wedge pieces. I don't see any gaps there. And look at all the fun details at the bottom floor. It feels like something that could exist in real life, but then you realize you're in the fantasy land with the traveler that seems to be coming through. Now let's finish off with a much larger diorama. Also a desert bit of detailing, but we have a different color gradation here. The builder is Mox by Mad, and the title is Homecoming of a Thief. So this looks like an outlaw's dwelling, and based on how steeply those rocks uh, start coming up in the background, it looks like they're against a much larger cliff. And this is most likely nestled in a pretty well-hidden area. Even though this is a desert setting, it does seem to be full of life. We have fruit trees that are blooming, a mill, possibly a solar collector or something that's producing water in one corner, which is fun. And this does seem to be a sci-fi, somewhat futuristic area as well, because there is some type of hover speeder that seems to be uh, being worked on in a shack. What works so well about this diorama is the fact that you can see so clearly how these outlaws are living off the grid. There's a makeshift windmill that's put between an opening in the rocks that most likely has a lot of wind blowing through it. That that's connected to a generator. They produce all types of food for themselves, and it's just a fun, welcoming, well-built scene through and through. So anyways, those are my 10 favorite builds of the week. Let me know which ones were your favorite. Remember, you can always check out the links in the description below if you want to see more awesome builds. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time at Brick Vault. Yeah.